Great. So, uh, hi Piyush. Welcome. Hello, everyone. Hello, Maharashtra ma'am, Sridhar, Dr. Gera, uh, Aparna, Sonakshi, Gema. Thank you so much for joining in. Uh, my name is Rupar Divedi Pandey. Uh, I am uh, facilitating uh, excellence. I present facilitating excellence. I'm the founder director. And we have with us today. Okay. okay. A quick, quick request for everyone to keep their uh, mics on mute. And um, so, yes, okay. So my name is Rupa Devedi Pandey, and we are going to have a very exciting discussion today because we have with us Piyush. Piyush uh, is is with us on behalf of uh, Leadership or Us. Now, uh, Leadership or Us is he is a CEO of Leadership or Us. And the organization uh, that he uh, is representing is an organization that represents uh, comprehensive talent management, which is uh, which is also into l &D framework, uh, effective workforce strategy. And uh, he has uh, he has been into you know with exemplary leadership and behavioral skills. Piyush has conducted trainings in about twenty three con countries, fostering extraordinary business skills. His consultative prowess and executive presence have were born through leading diverse uh, teams in American Express. Um, anything that I can add, Piyush, uh, please be uh, my guest. I mean, this is something that I can definitely, you know, take from you as well. Today, what we are going to do with this initiative that we've started uh, is a joint initiative between facilitating excellence and leadership are us is something that we have realized uh, that CXOs are, we've been talking about how various CXOs are facing different kinds of challenges. But why we are kind of talking in terms of different challenges is what we plan to do is we plan to create a platform so that all challenges have a macro view. So we start today with something which is in everybody's mind Everybody has been discussing, everybody has been facing in terms of what is uh, what is happening when artificial intelligence is at our doorsteps. It's already in income, you know, it's already there. But then how are how is the workforce reacting to it? And that is where I think uh, we are having the first discussion of CXO Connect where we have invited, we have with us Piyush, where, who will be answering questions around how CHRO is uh, are facing this issue of deal, leading their workforce in the space of AI. And uh, over to you, Piyush, what else can I add before we get into the question answer? Sure. Thank you very much, Nupur, for uh, introducing me. That's, that was a very generous introduction to everybody. I'd like to thank everybody for taking out time from the busy schedule and joining us for this exciting conversation around how artificial intelligence is something which is making a lot of CXOs lose their sleep, and especially the CHROs who believe that they have a lot of humane concern for their employees that how can they make sure that they don't lose them because of the work getting replaced by artificial intelligence. I think Nupur's choice about this topic is very suitable. And while we are going to walk through some of the questions that she already has that she wants to discuss with me, feel free to share your questions and also feel free to share your views because we want to make this engaging and interactive and enriching for everybody for the time that we are investing because we want to become more knowledgeable about this because remember this is something which is going to redefine the way humanity works and I think we are at a very important pivot in the workforce we are in a very important pivot in the workplace and work itself 
So workplace, workforce, and the work, all three getting redefined coincidentally through artificial intelligence. Let's get going. Thank you so much, Bush. I completely agree, absolutely, that it is not just about workplace in general. It is about the overall uh, overall change which is happening across society. And that is why we should start with addressing how we can start with our own own workplace and that is why CHROs are waking up to the fact that yes AI is is here so okay my first question is just exactly about that that now that AI is here what is people are afraid about it? you know what is how is it affecting me my job uh, so how does uh, a lead us somebody who's leading the HR can have build a culture of transparency in wake of something that they are not really aware of, and especially people who have been working for, because there are six generations working across, what can they do? What can they kind of, how can they build a culture? Great. I would believe that people who are leading the HR function can continue to show curiosity in the possibilities for deploying artificial intelligence. And thus, they are at least making an effort or they should make an effort for the understanding what are the various aspects or processes in their respective organizations that can benefit from artificial intelligence to enhance their efficiency and even effectiveness. After all, we need to understand that the results that we get as suggestions from artificial intelligence are still needed to be reviewed for coherency by another authentic intelligence. So remember, there is an AI, which is artificial intelligence, but I want to make everybody aware about this phrase that I have coined, which is called authentic intelligence, which only humans possess, because artificial intelligence is a subset of what humans possess. It's not that artificial intelligence cannot subsume authentic intelligence of humans. We are yet to achieve 100% accurate results for 100% use cases of artificial intelligence, although we will continue to make good progress. So I believe that CHROs can foster a culture of trust if they go and tell their respective teams that the purpose of artificial intelligence is not to make you redundant. It's not to make you jobless. It's not to make you feel miserable that you are an absolutely useless person. That's not the intent. I think CHROs can do a wonderful job in just mentioning to everybody that we want you to become more efficient. We want you to become more effective and ultimately become more successful because only when you are successful individually as an employee of the organization can I take the aggregate of all of you together working towards your individual goals, aggregating to the organizational goals. So we have to understand that it's up to us as CHROs to allay the fears of our employees and not go with the fact, how soon can I replace you and tell, give you a pink slip and tell you to go out of the organization? No, that's not the approach. The approach is that we've got to figure out what will really what will really work well for us and how can we show that curiosity how can we show that exploratory mindset and find out how can we be successful that's what i believe would help heads of hr chros foster a culture of trust and transfer that's amazing. In fact, I was thinking about what you just said, artificial intelligence and authentic intelligence. It, it almost sounds like AI square. And that is what uh -huh. CHROs need to kind of talk about. That we do need AI the whole square for the organizations to succeed today. It's it's amazing uh, insight. Uh, so, but you know, there are there are people who are saying that the skills which were relevant are getting kind of not relevant. So they are very scared about their job losses, even if the CHROs built in that kind of a mindset. 
So what can then the uh, head of organizations or CHROs do uh, to kind of say that, yes, no, your skills are, yes, I understand what you said, that authentic intelligence need to be put in place. But what else can be done uh, from, from the skills and job satisfaction, the job relevance perspective, the, the cut to cut uh, realization? Great, great question. I think it's a very nice question if we just understand it correctly that if you ask any employee and all of them would say eight hours are not sufficient in a day for them to accomplish their current tasks, right? Most of them would say that they have time staff and they have a lot of work which they just cannot finish in the allocated time. The CHRO or the, the owner of the organization can actually ask them, what if I was to give you an assistant which would do your repetitive, non-analytical and non-authentic intelligence work and make you more efficient? And I can guarantee you with 100% conviction that not even a single person would refuse to that because what they would say, oh yes, if somebody can do this monotonous stuff, tasks which are boring, you know, it doesn't excite me and I could give this to somebody else to do this, marvelous. My job content would be far more appealing to me, far more exciting to me because remember, most of us go to work thinking about what's the work ahead. We don't think about what's the salary I'm getting today, right? We, yes, it's important. I'm not discounting the fact that compensation, salaries, and benefits are important. That is an important workforce. We need to pay for our bills. We need to fulfill our responsibilities. But I'm just saying that it's about what is the job content that I have to accomplish today? And when I'm overwhelmed with so much of work, but here is a person who asks me, it's the head of HR, Piyush, how can I make you more efficient? How can I give you two more assistants? I can give you three more assistants for all the tasks that you have to do manually and they will give you the output, which is as accurate as possible, but you would still need to review it because I can't guarantee you 100% accuracy. And that's where I need to understand that my job is not gone because the work or the output that these individuals are going to give to me, we'll call them bots for the current conversation, and that's what even the industry is calling them as, the bots are going to give me some output. And I need to make sure that the output that's coming to me is thoroughly, you can say, trialed, is thoroughly experimented, but eventually it's the authentic intelligence which is going to win. And that's why portraying that it's about your efficiency. It's about portraying that I want you to be successful. I want you to make sure that you embrace new technology because if you don't do it unfortunately our competitors and their employees are already embracing it they are more efficient they're more effective and they're already treading the path of success so let's not have them race ahead in this competitive world and we just wait and follow the traditional method of working and we just tell you well we do want to save your jobs so but that's why we would not even experiment with artificial intelligence. That's actually been short-sighted. That's actually been uh, something which I, I believe is not having a vision of how can I embrace emerging technology and weave it as a part of the organization work DNA. Because I'm sure there would have been a cult and a generation which would have thought that laptop Oh my God, Microsoft Excel, PowerPoint. Uh, I'm sure there was a generation which probably never ex experienced this, but today we, ex we, we start work by going into spreadsheets. We work on you know the slides. We work on all of those things because that's how it, we just transition into. And the next transition is this, and we might not even be required to struggle with creating slides and a lot of other stuff on sheets because we would be giving voice commands and probably moving away from keyboard and just the voice commands convert into the actual tasks being executed by the artificial intelligence on my computer. And I'll be so happy to see that in front of my eyes because it will just make me feel, oh, I've got a team of four or five assistants now just accelerating the, my pace of work. I don't need to do any of the work that was so time consuming manual, tedious, boring, and 
eventually very, very de-energizing. So that's what I believe could be a, a smart approach. But I also feel that, you know, as an as a CHRO, some of the aspects that they can consider doing are plan to leverage generative AI through their existing HR technology vendor. So it's got to be a partnership. So they can say that our current human resource management system, which houses up most of our HR policies, you have to go and search for the specific clarification. What if we can have a bot which comes up and says, how can I help you today? What is the query? And someone says, I want to know more about my leave policy. I want to know, can I take leave like this? Can I club it with a long weekend? And the bot tries to answer that because the bot reads the policy, but understands it because the AI is trained in that way and is able to answer more and more complex questions but without having this employee interface with someone within HR. So look at it as a trial. And another thing that we I, I recommend people, uh, heads of HR can do is to assess are the AI solutions mature enough for immediate use, right? And it's good if they can do something like a pilot, like a test drive, just like we, we don't go and buy a car overnight or, or buy a home, you know, just overnight. We try and look around, we do a test drive. How does it feel? How does it look like when we go to the new home? It's the same thing conceptually. We've got to do a trial of and then scale it up because I believe that we don't want artificial intelligence to be shunned just because there were some minor failures. It is something which we need to continue to tweak and we need to kind of uh, train that. Just like I would believe, if I can draw this analogy, artificial intelligence is like a newborn baby. Authentic intelligence is the maturity of a human being. And just like for children, we have to wait. And I'm sure Nupur, you'll have some lot of the experience around this when you talk about children's emotional intelligence. It's about the fact that patiently we need to wait for the artificial intelligence to gradually come up to the level of authentic intelligence. And that's why we believe that we've got to partner with the tech team. We've got to partner with compliance. We've got to partner even maybe with legal because we are talking about something which is in a way disruptive. And because it's disruptive, it's good to have a cross-functional perspective and a more rounded approach to make sure that we don't have something which is incorrect or, or we make a mistake about that. That's my opinion. And I know it'll be good to know that, you know, something around the emotional intelligence piece that you do, how you nurture children. In fact, uh, this is a very insightful uh, thought. And what I have been thinking is, because that is where my, my next question also comes up from, is it's great for people to uh, say that, yes, this is for you. But there is always this fear that whenever I'm training with employees, my background of 20 years with HR has also kind of said, and I agree with you on the authentic uh, intelligence part of it. Uh, but that fear also is there as to, you know, okay, this is where, how do I actually train myself on something new? What if I fail? What if I'm not up to it? And then there is this factor of, I'm comfortable here. Uh, will will I be able to adapt to this? So what can the CHRO do in terms of building that atmosphere to help that technical, because see, people are generally very scared of a technical skill like this, uh, and especially uh, on organization part. So when you say, uh, you know, and this is a very emotional intelligence kind of a background that I'm talking about, how can, what kind of skill level or uh, cultural change that an organization can build up in terms of a, a building up that atmosphere? And we've already discussed culture, but then, skill for employees that can be brought in to help them become more adaptive to this kind of learning. So one is a very concrete learning technical skill and other is openness to learning that, you know, yes, this is for your benefit and it's not that big, big a deal. 
how can they be more adaptive to it? Right. So here are some suggestions that I would like to recommend for the heads of HR to consider. Look at current generative AI landscape. You know, prioritize revenue growth and customer experience over cost savings and push for a relatively quick time to production. In fact, I see one of my very nice uh, career coaches, Anirban, who is the vice president at uh, Optum, who's joined in. And he's very passionate about finance supporting all of the great initiatives in organizations. And I believe that this is where we believe that HR can be partnering with finance in understanding that here is an opportunity for us to figure out that will there be financial benefits for the organization. And that's where I think, what is the current landscape and how can we make sure that we prioritize revenue growth and customer experience over cost savings? And it's not a generic statement that we would need to pass. We can partner with the CFO. We can partner with the finance team to help us understand that this is where we have. And if there are certain productivity matrix from the operations team, you know, there could be the head of operations who could tell us that this is one of the most laborious processes that we have. And we, if we can experiment with some automation, immediately we can get a finance expert like, uh, you know, Anirban or, or, or someone like that to help guide us that, yes, there will be tangible benefits. The other thing is that once we figure out, let's say, a point of departure, the difficult task for us will be what would be the point of arrival, which would be a little bit hazy right now. And just because it's hazy right now doesn't mean that we stop exploring because it, it might be very, uh, you know, just like when you're, you're an aircraft, right? They say that that's the visibility, but the aircraft doesn't, you know, get into something which is absolutely unknown, right? They do have some navigation uh, even in in even during the night and even during even uh, when going through the clouds. Similarly, for us, we can have for generative AI potential use cases for value and feasibility, which kind of give us some kind of a direction in that ambiguity of darkness, in that ambiguity of clouds that we need to spearhead the organization. And that's when we can say that we need to strategize, we need to plan, and we need to communicate. Because if we don't communicate and we expect that you know the, the employees will assume things are going well, I think just not over-communicating, but also not under-communicating, but the right communication at the right forums for the right audience, level of audience, will help us make sure that we're explaining to them that the organization is definitely evaluating the opportunities, the benefits, and even pitfalls. Please remember that any technology cannot be only benefits. There will always be pitfalls. We live in a world of duality. There is something which is good, but unfortunately, there is something which are the cons as well that accompany that. It's just that the good sometimes or the pros get amplified, but the cons get, you know, not so amplified or, or probably are reduced from an impact perspective. But we need to make sure that we apply a reasonably well-rounded approach to make sure that we manage the security. There is risk in governance because remember, we have to understand that we are in a way giving it to somebody who's like a childlike mentality. And we can see a child playing with some of the things and we say, no, 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 hold on, don't do that, you'll hurt yourself, right? So similarly, even in artificial intelligence, the leaders with the maturity, with the authentic intelligence of human beings can actually prevent the AI havoc and going absolutely berserk. And we don't want that to happen because we've got to still review all outputs. We've got to set some clear organizational policies. We've got to have some enterprise grade security we've got to have some risk controls which are implemented and while we are doing all of this i would still say evaluate design test implement just like apply the concepts of design thinking even out here for generative ai and go beyond the big platform players watch out for open source alternatives and there is a lot happening so today ai is not confined only to the big wigs or the, you can say, very established 
10 players. Last but not the least, Nupur, I would say is this, that it's an exciting place to be in because that's where CHROs are saying that I've got to figure out talent and skills. I've got to figure out what are some of the core AI roles, skills, responsibilities to align the right skills to the required roles in so many multidisciplinary initiatives. And that's why I feel that there is going to be some exciting times for CHROs because it's probably not just the traditional work that HR has been associated with because there is everything which is going to be uh, refreshed. And if not a refresh, I would say it's going to be just a different ballgame, right from the time of how you attract talent, develop talent, and then retain talent. Absolutely. I think I think that was especially uh, another one. One of the questions that I, I just kind of understood and I want to, and this has been uh, HR's uh, issue all through, is the ethical perspective that, you know, which is all the more uh, high with AI nowadays. Now, like you said, if you give this in hands of somebody who's inexperienced, how do they deal with it? And what can HR do? To, and very, very quickly, if you, I was, I was to ask you this, and I know you've answered, uh, you know, there are policies that need to be put in place, but the ethics issue is something, uh, it, and it's not just about the privacy part of it. The how to address the ethics part of it from from the organization. Right. So, uh, thank you, Nupur, for bringing that up. Uh, I think let's take a big picture view and let's make sure that we all have the context right. So, we all would have heard a lot of buzz around the fear of an unregulated artificial intelligence. And that is why we have governments across the globe scrambling to issue regulations on artificial intelligence. Similarly, organizations are working on understanding the utility of AI in their respective works. Some organizations have in fact burned their fingers already as a leading mobile manufacturer allowed its software developers to use Gen AI only to realize that they have inadvertently divulged their own existing software code in the public for their competitors to view. So imagine this kind of a mistake from you know, one of the world's respected, reputed you know, mobile manufacturers doing this kind of a mistake from by getting overexcited about artificial intelligence and then going ahead and doing something like this would have, yes, it gave them a good learning lesson, but it's expensive, right? Somebody else has now got their codes, right? <laughs> Somebody else knows how to, you know, have a competing product, just copy paste and overnight they're ready. So that's the reason why organizations are setting up specialist roles within each unit that is evaluating artificial intelligence. And they are promoting resource centers for sharing discoveries on AI, accelerating skill enhancement on AI use cases, setting up various open channels of communication and trying to have a more humane approach to impact on their employees due to the work getting easily transferred to generative AI, but having discussions on what could be utilized the unlimited human potential and so many other important aspects that the organization is trying to achieve. And that's why, once again, it's all the game between artificial intelligence and authentic intelligence. Beautiful. I agree. And as, as an emotional intelligence expert, I would definitely say that a lot of development on that front would also help people to understand, take decisions on what is, how effectively their actions would impact their actions the consequences their actions would have. And that is what is the missing link, the authentic uh, intelligence, as you call it, AI square, as we want to call it. So I think this is a wonderful discussion we just had, Deush, and I would love to have uh, audience come and question, uh, bring, uh, bring forth their questions so that, you know, we will have more questions on that. We have Ram Gopal, sir, Malakshmi, ma'am. Yusufji, uh, Suman, 
Nagaraj, if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, ask. And, uh, you know, Anirbhanji, any questions? I, or, yes, sir. Uh, uh, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, fantastic. A nice discussion. Good to have, and after a long time, uh, subject discussion. Nice to join this session. Uh, nice. Glad to join this session. So, uh, I mean, I'm, it's not a question. I just uh, maybe uh, complementing what Piyush has said. I will looking at pure on the cost benefit aspects, particularly in the Indian context, it doesn't work out. All right. So, I think we have to look beyond the cost benefit analysis. Um, maybe more in terms of things which which a human being is not supposed to do in the sense that something critical, something uh, no, not safe, all those things. I mean, I'm talking more in terms of uh, taking in terms of the operations or other things which are more unsafe activities. Though those places we are bound to use all this, and where we also sometimes where purely need to improve on the productivity, where we implement. I'm talking about. Uh, IE4, IE4.5, where more of AI comes into picture. There we try to do implement and compare on the cost benefit analysis, it never works. So I had to look beyond the cost benefit and see what are the overall benefits to the organization. And of course, uh, good that uh, no, it is unexpected, but COVID has taught so many lessons where, where there are absolutely no human being we can't use. So we are forced to automate. Probably would have been uh, early uh, understood all these aspects and have gone to a AI or a IE a little early, would have improved much more productivity. So looking at all these aspects, particularly in the Indian context, we have to look beyond beyond cost benefit analysis. And, sure. and probably that's also an input to CHROs and even financial teams where most of the times we look at purely on the cost benefit analysis. Sure. Good point. Thank you for sharing, Ram Gopal, sir. That was wonderful, share. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, Thank you, everybody, uh, for coming and uh, participating in this discussion. I would actually let Nupur do the honor for the completion as well. Over to you, Nupur. Thank you so much, Piyush. Thank you so much for this discussion. I, I... What I have believed and seen is that AI is very scary for some people. And uh, this discussion is was only to say that we will and we are faced with a lot of AI issues. Uh, but then, like uh, Piyush very clearly mentioned, going forward, we have to see this just like any other intervention. Uh, with the advent of internet, uh, there were concerns. But then we can't live without that right now. And similarly, AI is here to stay. And we actually make a friend of it or a foe of it is something that we have to decide for ourselves. We better make friends with it. So how will we do that is something that very clearly Piyush has mentioned. AI square, use your intelligence with artificial intelligence. Thank you so much, Piyush for this insightful discussion. And thank you so much, Hema, uh, Mr. Ramgopal, sir, Malakshmi, ma'am, Sumban, Yusufji, and Edwan, and mm -hmm. all the guests, all the attendees who have been here with us through the session, mm -hmm. Sridhar, uh, Abarna, Raghuram, sir. Uh, I I will take you on leave now. And uh, that is that is all from our end. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.